James, tell me about the different sort of domains you can find in Ravenloft and the different characters, different types of gothic horror monsters we can find. So Ravenloft is a kind of weird setting in that it's divided up into these different domains. And it always felt a little bit patchwork to me because you can cross a, over yeah. yeah, you can cross over a border and you've suddenly left Dracula land and entered Frankenstein's monster land. <laughs> and so each of these different lands is themed around a different gothic horror monster or character and has different technology levels and and in fact Ravenloft's the backstory for Ravenloft is that it's not a real world, that it is a sort of a patchwork world where people who commit unspeakable acts get yanked away to this sort of no one's really quite sure why um but almost like a prison world where they get forced to they get given everything that they wanted but in such a way that it, they are tortured forever by it so most of the domains which are sort of vaguely middle to eastern european themed form the largest land mass which is called the core and then there are smaller groups of themed domains which float around it called Islands of Terror, which you can't just walk to, you've got to find a special way. And so the famous way that Ravenloft works originally is that you would be walking along in the Forgotten Realms or wherever, and suddenly the mists would rise, and when the mists lowered, you were somewhere else. And so the original conception for Ravenloft was what they called a weekend in hell. The mist would rise, you'd find yourself in this horrible place, and your goal was to escape. Right, right. And then over time, the creators of Ravenloft realised that this meant that you had no real reason to empathise with anyone in mm -hmm. Ravenloft or connect with the world at all. And so they started pushing more for indigenous characters and emphasising how it's actually worth trying to protect and defend the people in Ravenloft. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest problems with Curse of Strahd is that they went away from this and said that everyone in Ravenloft in Curse of Strahd has no soul and isn't yeah. a real person, which to me is a great shame. It's like, what, they're not real? They're not real people? You don't have to feel sorry for them? I'm glad you left that out when we did that. Yeah, it just rubbed me the wrong way. To me, it just encourages murder hoboism. Mm. Anyway, so yes, each of the domains has a different theme and is very much the reflection of the Dark Lord, who is the figure who created and rules over it, whether openly or secretly. Some of the domains have got very visible, powerful lords. Like who? Like Strahd, who is very much like Dracula. He is the lord, he rules on the castle on top of the mountain that you shouldn't go near. Whereas some of the domains have very subtle or background dark lords who the people in the domain don't even know is the one who's calling the shots. For example, there's a very sort of French-style domain called Dement Liu, which is very cultured and urbane, and one of the people on the ruling council is secretly the mastermind who's pulling all the strings but nobody knows this, and most people just get along with their lives without ever encountering him. Right, right. Anyway, rather than tell you all about every single domain, and there's, every a si there's a lot of them, and they're not all created equal. Some of them are really lame. So rather than take you through every single domain, we went through the book ourselves. We went through Domains of Dread, which is the second edition campaign setting guide, where they put the whole thing into one hardback book. And we've come up with our list of the top 10 Dark Lords of Ravenloft, <laughs> according to us. Cool. And so we're going to start off with our dishonourable mention. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Our dishonourable mention is Lord Soth from Sithicus. Who's that? Lord Sithicus. Soth Ugh. is like the Boba Fett <laughs> of... <laughs> Ravenloft. <laughs> that's a that's a hot take right there. Lord Soth is the coolest looking guy ever. Oh, I see. What He's you mean, such yeah. a. We get told that he is such a badass. And he's wearing all the black knight. He's armor wearing all this black all knight armor with the glowing red eyes. So, one of the ideas with Ravenloft is that all of the characters from it came from the different Dungeons and Dragons worlds. And were so evil that they got sucked into Ravenloft, where they got given a domain. 
and Lord Soth was one of the breakout characters in the Dragonlance world because he looks so cool. I'm not sure that he actually does anything in the original Dragonlance adventures. He shows up in the Dragonlance novels and acts really badass. <laughs> but does but, he actually do anything? Well, so to promote the new campaign setting, he got sucked into Ravenloft and given his own domain. So Lord Soth's backstory is that he was a very honourable knight who one day rescued an elf woman from uh, an attack by ogres. And he was so overcome by how beautiful she was that he fell in love and promised to marry her immediately. And then shortly thereafter, his pregnant wife fell down the stairs oh. and died. Oh, damn. That is dark. <laughs> And Lord Soth assured his new elf wife that he had nothing to do with it. But rumours started getting out, and Lord Soth and his wife prayed to the gods to find a way to repent. And Lord Soth got given a vision of the upcoming cataclysm, which was when the gods threw a fiery mountain on the world of Dragonlance. And Lord Soth got given the quest that he could go and he could stop this from happening. He would die, but he would save the entire world. And so he rode off to save the world where he met the sisters of his wife. Oh no. Who started telling him how his wife was actually cheating on him back at home. <gasps> and Lord Soth immediately turned around rather than save the world to go and confront his wife who he had murdered his old wife for. And he got home and confronted her and asked what she was doing. And... At that very moment, the fiery mountain hit, and they all burnt alive. And Soth's wife cursed him because he could have stopped this, but instead his jealousy meant that he cost the world its chance of this, which also proves that the gods of Dragonlance are dicks. I mean, yeah. But that's a whole nother topic. We'll save that one for when we talk about Dragonlance. Anyway, Lord Soth got cursed to eternal life, or eternal unlife, as a charred corpse wearing blackened, burnt armour. Inside the burnt-down ruins of his castle, where every night the ghosts of the elf woman who turned him from his quest sing to him about how he betrayed every single person in his life. That's pretty metal. The problem is that after this really metal backstory, Lord Soth doesn't do anything. Oh my god, he's so lame. In the original Dragonlance novels, Lord Soth meets a new elf woman and decides he likes her, then decides that he's going to steal the soul of one of the villains in the series and is last seen running off with her body giggling. He's just so lame. He then got ported over into Ravenloft where it was revealed that his lieutenant, who was supposed to capture her soul, betrayed him and Soth chases her off into Ravenloft. Once he becomes a Dark Lord, he then sits on his throne and mopes all the time that he is there. I hate this guy. <laughs> There's an adventure about him where his domain starts falling apart because he's gotten himself six basically magical flat screen TVs set up and is just not paying any attention to what's going on. In the end, he gets kicked out of Ravenloft because the original creators of Dragonlance wanted him back. But the official reason in-universe is that he wasn't any fun to torture. Whenever he got tortured by having things remind him of his past, he went, yes, I'm a horrible monster, and just moped. So yeah, fired from Ooh. Ravenloft for being too mopey. Man. Then finally returned to Dragonlance for a big trilogy in which he got asked to join the armies of evil, said, no, I'd rather mope, and then his castle fell on him. <laughs> <laughs> Ravenloft... <laughs> fans and Dragonlance fans alike were pissed. <laughs> he sounds lame. So yeah, Lord Soth, dishonorable mention, looks like a badass, sounds like a badass, does nothing. I am not about empty aesthetic. And his entire domain is about what if Dragonlance was evil, which is just not a really engaging no. gothic horror trope. After he was gone, his domain stuck around, but had to find new Dark Lords like a Badger or an evil gypsy cloud. 
Which I'm, is exactly as problematic and as it sounds. Okay, we've spent way too long talking about this idiot. Let's move on. <laughs> Maybe you can trim it down. I'm going to be trimming that down. <laughs> sure. It's dumb. <laughs> He's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs>